harm has become an almost ubiquitous term in social justice circles. Hear a Mandarin word that sounds like the N-word? You've been harmed, according to students and administrators at USC. Famed author of White Fragility, Robin DiAngelo's latest New York Times bestselling book, is even subtitled, How Progressive White People Perpetuate Racial Harm. It seems to argue that anything other than full adherence to her worldview perpetuates harm against people of color. In contemporary social justice parlance, the word harm has broadened from its original meaning of physical and sometimes mental injury to anything that offends, creates discomfort, or through slippery slope logic can eventually lead to physical harm. The word harm does not mean what it used to mean. The standard definition of harm has undergone concept creep. The broadening of a word's meaning to incorporate thoughts and actions formerly considered outside its purview. When you see the definition of white supremacy go from the KKK and Nazis to individualism and objectivity, you're seeing an example of concept creep. Where once the potential for harm existed in contact sports, accidents, physical altercations, traumas, and so on, one might now find it while reading a reference to a racial slur in a question in a law school exam, or listening to a recorded debate in a classroom, such as when teaching assistant Lindsay Shepard played for her class a debate on transgender pronouns featuring psychologist Jordan Peterson, or encountering any of millions of possible triggering opinions on social media. The redefinition of harm infantilizes people, and I, for one, refuse to be harmed so easily. I would never let someone else have so much power over my well-being that a mean tweet or a mere question, especially when asked out of curiosity or a request for elaboration, would shake me to my core. Americans of African descent have been resilient through 250 years of slavery and 100 years of Jim Crow apartheid. Now that we have overcome physical oppression and segregation, is now the time to give others so much control over our minds, our happiness and fulfillment? I don't think a world in which people give their power away so easily is one any self-respecting person would want to see. As author and lawyer Van Jones so eloquently said, quote, I don't want you to be safe, ideologically. I don't want you to be safe, emotionally. I want you to be strong. That's different. I'm not going to pave the jungle for you. Put on some boots and learn how to deal with adversity. I'm not going to take all the weights out of the gym. That's the whole point of the gym. <laughs> this is the gym. My anti-racism is about promoting empowerment. Defining harm as shallowly as many other self-proclaimed anti-racist activists do leads them to mistake symbolic gestures for concrete strategies for change. Complaining about triggering language and hurt feelings directs energy away from ameliorating real suffering in the world. Hunger, violence, homelessness, and so much more. Paying Robin DiAngelo's five-figure speaking fee enriches her but doesn't get anyone out of economic deprivation. Encouraging students at Loyola University Chicago to report cases of perceived emotional harm to the school does nothing to help the hundreds of Chicagoans literally dying of homicide each year. I understand that certain words and statements do hold historically disquieting connotations. Being called a racial slur or being associated with a particular negative stereotype never feels good. This take on harm is closer to the original meaning of the word, and such actions must be addressed effectively. However, eradicating harm, newly redefined, may only amount to performance art in which the semblance of action is all that is needed. When you see someone complain about the harm imparted by someone else's words, ask yourself if the complainer's ideas and tactics will make any real difference in the lives of the truly injured. When harm begins to mean everything, it ceases to mean anything at all. 
Join me in building a culture of resilience and optimism at fairforall.org.